Hello everyone and welcome to another day of GSC at Home. My name is Harriet and today we're going to be talking about bubbles. Now if we want to talk about bubbles, the first thing we need to do is make our very own bubble mixture. So let's get stuck in. In order to make our bubble mixture, we are first going to need a place to put it. You can use a little tub or a tub like I have here, or a glass. We're then going to add about 240 mils of water and four tablespoons of washing up liquid. Mix it together nice and gently. We want this to be a nice green color, but we don't want it to froth up too much with bubbles. Another tip to make your bubbles last for longer is using a teaspoon of baking powder. Mix it in until it's completely combined. And there you have it, the perfect bubble mix. Now we have made our bubble mixture, we're going to need something to blow those bubbles with. You might have some old bubble wands lying around at home, but we are going to make these bubble cones that I have right here. Now in order to make your very own bubble cone, you are going to need a piece of paper or card. I tend to find that card lasts a little bit longer. Some sellotape and some scissors as well. So make sure you have an adult to help you if you're not used to using scissors. Now, in order to make our cone shape, we are going to have to pick a corner on our piece of card and we are going to roll it into a cone. So use that bottom long line of card to guide you along and we're going to end up with a little bit of a waffle ice cream cone shape right here. So we have to get this all sealed up. We're going to use a little bit of tape. Try not to let your cone unravel as you grab some tape. This is where having an adult to help you would be very, very useful. And we're just going to take a little bit of tape Tighten up that bubble cone if it's unraveled, don't worry, it's still fixable. And we are just going to put a little bit of tape right along that seam. I'm going to bring this up to the camera and show you just like this. You've got the little seam of sellotape right here. Now you might notice I've got a great big triangle, great big pointy looking triangle at the top of my bubble cone. You might have a triangle, you might have a little V shape as well. Don't worry, we're going to fix these and make sure this top is nice, flat and smooth. So we're going to take those scissors and we're just going to cut along the top of our cone so it's nice and flat in there and it sits up like a little unicorn horn or a party hat. Now it's time to start blowing bubbles. Grab your bubble cone, give it a nice gentle swish in our bubble mixture. You should be able to see we've got a little film of bubble mixture over the top of our cone. Now it's time to start blowing. And there we have it, some giant bubbles with our bubble cone. What shape are the bubbles that you're blowing? We call this round football-like shape a sphere. Bubbles will always stay spheres, no matter what shape a bubble cone or bubble wand you blow them through. This is all to do with surface tension, which is how strongly the molecules of a liquid, like water, are attracted to each other. Water is quite special. It has a really high surface tension, which means that its molecules always want to stick together and they hate being apart. Because our water molecules want to stick together, all of the soap we've added to our mixture binds together as well. When we blow a bubble through our bubble cone, those molecules stretch out instead of breaking apart. Eventually, that bubble will pinch off and float away. They'll stay in a sphere shape because it allows them to stick together in a really strong structure whilst holding all of that air we've blown into the bubble in a teeny tiny space. What colours can you see in the bubbles that you've made? It looks a little bit like a rainbow. This is what happens when light passes through a bubble. The sunlight, or white light as we call it, is actually made up of lots of different colours. It's made up of every single colour that we can see with our eyes. We get rainbows in the sky when sunlight passes through tiny drops of water. 
the light bounces or refracts off those tiny drops of water and the white light is split into all the different colours that we can see, producing a rainbow effect. When light passes through our bubble, the same thing happens. It bounces and refracts off of the outer layer of the bubble and also that inner wall as well. And that creates that rainbow we can see inside our bubble. Different colours help us know different things about the bubble too. When the bubble looks blue and green, that tells us that the walls of the bubble are really thick and the bubble's really strong. When we see yellow and orange, that tells us the walls of the bubble are actually really thin and it might be about to pop. Now, I'm sure you are all experts at popping bubbles, but why do bubbles pop? Is it because our fingers are really sharp and pointy or is it something else? Bubbles pop because they dry out. In warm, bright sunlight, all the water inside your bubble might evaporate and that would cause it to pop. It's the same thing with our dry fingers as well. Dry things pop bubbles. There's an easy way to fix this. Use your finger and cover it completely in bubble mixture all the way up to the knuckle. Then you might be able to touch a bubble without it popping. Let's give that a go. And there you have it. You can actually put your finger inside the bubble without it popping. This is the same reason why you can make a beard out of bubbles in the bath. It's because your skin is already wet. Thank you again for tuning in to another GSC at home. If you liked today's video, please let us know in the comments down below along with any questions you have and we'll do our best to answer them. Until next time, we will see you soon with more science content and at home experiments with GSC at home. Bye.